I'm an AS5 student and I have my CIE exams coming up pretty soon and I wanted to do a video to help you guys out because I actually struggled with gas exchange between the alveoli and also the respiring cells and the capillaries. I actually spent a whole lesson asking my bio teacher and asking her if she could explain the whole thing to me and she did and it was so nice of her to do that hopefully it helps you guys so let's go the air over here will come down with like the air you breathe in will come down and then goes through the trachea and then it is separated into bronchi one of them will be lead into one lung and then one of them is called a bronchus and then this bronchus will branch out into bronchioles at the at the very end of the bronchioles there will be air sacs one air sac is called an alveolus when many alveolus group together to become a grape shaped like structure it is called an alveoli there are blood capillaries that surround the alveoli so that quick and efficient gas exchange between carbon dioxide and oxygen can occur and the elastic fibers and smooth muscle in the alveoli allows expansion and ease, ease of inflation when air is breathed in and the air is taken to the alveoli. Okay, let's go over here now. How is blood taken from the lungs to the respiring cells in our body? The oxygenated blood here will be taken through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium, down into the left ventricle, and it is boosted up through and into the aorta, and then into respiring cells. The aorta contains of number one, the first level is major arteries, and then it separates into minor arteries, and then separates into arterioles consists of a network and a capillary bed where many capillaries form a network so that the blood can be taken throughout the body except the lungs. I drew a respiring cell here and I want to describe what happens to oxygen and carbon dioxide when gas exchange happens in the capillary so, the oxygenated blood from the lungs that is taken by the capillary will be taken over here to the respiring cell and it gives oxygen to the cell. And we know that for respiration to occur, oxygen must be taken in and carbon dioxide is breathed out and excreted. So, how does the carbon dioxide be excreted and taken to lungs to be breathed out. The carbon dioxide will go through five layers the cell membrane of the cell and the cell wall of the cell and then the squamous epithelium which will have one and then two layers. So that's four layers up until now and then the red blood cell has a one layer so it is one two three four five five layers for the carbon dioxide to enter the red blood cell there's three ways the first way is how 70 to 80 percent of the carbon dioxide is taken to the lungs first way is the carbon dioxide from the cell will diffuse through 
all these layers and into the red blood cell where the water of the red blood cell will combine with this carbon dioxide to form carbonic acid and we don't want carbonic acid in our body because our our blood will have a low pH and our blood will be very acidic and we don't want acidic blood because our blood should be maintained at a pH of around 7. How do we get rid of this? In the red blood cell there's hemoglobin and an enzyme called the carbonic anhydrase. The enzyme carbonic anhydrase will separate, will catalyze carbonic acid. It will separate into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. The hydrogen ions that is left in the red blood cell will combine with hemoglobin to form hemoglobinic acid. Where does the bicarbonate ions go now? The bicarbonate ions will diffuse through the wall of the red blood cell and then back into the plasma where it is dissolved and then the blood will just be taken back to the lungs. That's how 70 to 85% 80 is taken back to the lungs so it can be oxygenated. The second way is how carbon dioxide <laughs> will diffuse straight into the red blood cell and combine with hemoglobin to form carbaminohemoglobin. So that's 10% of how carbon dioxide travels in the blood and then through in the capillaries and then to the lungs. The third way is how carbon dioxide will diffuse straight through the squamous epithelium and into the plasma and then it is dissolved in the plasma and then it is the blood is taken straight to the lungs so it can be oxygenated. So that's three ways. If the question asks you how carbon dioxide that, re that is respired from the cells is taken by the is taken by the capillary to the lungs then you list those three in the respiring cells we have a high partial pressure and high concentration of carbon dioxide now this is this is deoxygenated blood but it is not saturated yet because saturation saturated is different from concentration and high partial pressure. So this deoxygenated blood will be taken into the right atrium by two of the largest veins in the body, the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. It will be taken into the right atrium down to the right ventricle and then boosted it up through the pulmonary artery and then into the lungs again. And then in the lungs, the alveoli does its job. So imagine this is the capillary. It lies closely next to the alveoli. And then the deoxygenated blood comes down over here. The carbon dioxide will be excrete it will diffuse through the capillary wall and through the alveoli wall and into the air of this air sac called the alveolus and then the air filled with carbon dioxide will be taken out taken out through the trachea again and then breathed out and respired by us. At the same time over here, right, the alveoli which has the oxygen will 
also diffuse through the wall of the alveoli and diffuse through the wall of the capillary and then quickly it changes into oxygenated blood now. Hope it helped you guys. Thanks guys. Bye.